everybody and welcome to Flock Talk. Today we're going to be going over a bunch of different toy parts and how you can use them for foraging. The first and potentially most diverse toy part you can use is finger traps. You can get finger traps from the dollar store or bird toy specific stores, just double checking that the dyes that are used in them are bird safe. Finger traps are some of my favorite toy parts to use when introducing a bird to foraging because there's so many different ways to use them and different ways to make them slightly more complicated. The first way to turn a finger trap into a forager is by utilizing the woven material that makes the finger trap. All you need to do is lightly press down on one of the weaves and tuck your seed, pellet, or treat underneath one of those little weaves. This allows your bird to be able to easily see the treat that they want to access, but still have to actually crunch through the material in order to access it. The second way to utilize a finger trap is by using slightly larger treats or medium-sized pellets and actually sticking them inside the core of the finger trap itself. So in this instance, I'm going to use a little bundle of millet and just slide it on the inside. Again, you can make this more complicated by leaving it visible or pushing it further down into the finger trap so your bird has to chew through more of the toy to get it. The next way to make this more complicated is to have your treat in the middle of the finger trap and actually fold the ends around and tuck them into each other so you make a little ring where there's no exposed end for your bird to be able to knock the treat out of. This way your bird has to chew through it in order to get the treat. This is something that I would only do with more advanced foragers as a new bird would not understand that there is food in here and may potentially give up if it's too challenging for them. So this is something I would work up to as potentially an end goal. Another way to make these slightly more complicated is once you've got your treat already in the center of your finger trap is to stuff or block the ends. I tend to use pre-cut crinkle paper for this and just stuff it in the ends. This way your bird can easily pull the threads out and be able to knock out the treat that's inside or choose to chew through it. You can easily do this with printer paper or other loose toy parts you have laying around. The next toy part I'll talk about then is crinkle paper itself. Crinkle paper can have so much more value in it than people tend to realize. The easiest way to use crinkle paper is just to toss it out onto a plate or a tray and then sprinkle your seeds or pellets into that paper. This way your bird will dig and scratch around while they search for the pellets that are scattered throughout this paper. Due to the nature of this type of paper, it tends to cling onto itself, which can make it a little bit more challenging for birds than just loose toy parts. This way when your bird grabs one, a whole bundle gets picked up and then they end up having to really pull and dig to separate the pieces and get to the food that's hidden underneath. Crinkle paper can also be used to make other foragers more complicated. I tend to use these cups quite a lot for foraging, but they can be really easy, especially for Newt who has been foraging for years and understands exactly how to solve these. Crinkle paper, you can simply stuff in there to make it harder for them to access the treat that's hiding. Now you can either stick the treat in and then follow it up with the crinkle paper. So they have to pull that crinkle paper out in order to access the treat inside, or you could do it in layers. So every time they pull out a chunk, there's the potential for another seed to come flying out. That will add a lot more fun and a bit of surprise to the already kind of basic forager. And just because I happen to use these fancy looking little wooden cups doesn't mean that's the only thing you can use them in. You can easily replicate the same thing by using paper cups or DIYing a little origami paper box. You can use the ends of finger traps and stuff them in like we did before. Just about any sort of little cup shaped crevice that you are hiding food in you can use this paper to stuff the ends and conceal the treat and add a little bit of extra fun by adding an element that the bird just has to toss around, which tends to be a really enjoyable activity. Similar to the foraging tray, another way that you can use the crinkle paper is to stick it into your bird's food bowl. And this is very similar to the foraging tray in that you can either have the treats on top or underneath, but it adds a little bit more complexity because you have those deep dish walls of your food bowl. And that makes it so that way the bird can't just kind of dig and scatter or they actually have to physically lift up the paper and pull it out and toss it to the side in order to access the food that's underneath. With that foraging tray, your bird can kind of just walk around and gently push pieces to the side. This is kind of one-upping that challenge and making it a little bit more challenging. Next on the list is vine balls. And I talk about vine balls a lot because they're cheap and they're really easy to use. You don't need any tools to put them onto a thread to make a bigger toy out of it. They are very, very diverse in the way that you can use them. So the first way that I like to use finger traps is by taking a larger treat, usually millet, sometimes pieces of walnut, and just hooking it underneath one of the individual vines that make up the ball. 
This it helps introduce a bird into foraging, gets them accustomed to the idea, but doesn't involve a lot of chewing through and digging and a lot of effort that could cause a bird to get frustrated and want to give up on foraging. Next way to step this up is by putting the treats inside the actual ball or just gradually deeper into the ball as they get better at it. Vine balls work great for introducing the concept of chewing through something in order to access a treat because it's visible. With vine balls, you can see straight through them, and this means that when you are introducing your bird to foraging, they can see the treat and know what they're working towards. Whereas with things like finger traps, if that treat's inside, they can't necessarily see it, and it makes them lose a lot of that motivation to go looking for it if they've never had to do it before. Vine balls are one that you can just thread on a string and call it done, and they can entertain your bird for hours with all the different ways that you can hide things in them. You can make them more complicated by utilizing the crinkle paper in the last one and stuffing it in to help kind of hide and conceal that treat a little bit more so they start to learn to search for it even though they can't see the treat right away and add in that element of pulling the pieces apart in order to access the treat inside. I also like to use vine balls in combination with other toy parts to make things more complicated. So I have the wooden cups that I tend to use a lot. I can stick these vine balls inside the cups and conceal them in there so that way the bird now has to go looking for the cup in order to get the vine ball out from inside of it. You can again do the same thing with paper cups where the paper cups would be sitting there and then the treat is inside another layer of this vine ball inside that paper cup. Next up we have what are usually called vine tornadoes or kind of vine cones. They're these springy little toy parts that are made of wood. And these can be great for foraging in a variety of different ways. So the easiest one is to simply separate the spring, kind of stretch it out and tuck your treat in there so when you release it, it pins the treat in place. Again, this is a really easy way for your bird to see the treat and learn to go get it, but it creates a little bit more resistance than some of the other uh, foragers do, since it does spring back and add some pressure to the treat that's there. So your bird does have to work a little bit harder to get the food out of there. Another easy way to utilize these is to put the treat inside the cone, and then it's a little bit more concealed. Each cone, since these are natural materials, can be slightly different shaped. So while this one is pretty concealed and you couldn't see inside, a lot of them are a bit thinner and a bit looser. So where if you were to hide a treat inside, it would be a little bit more visible and easier for a bird to access. These can be great for teaching a bird how to forage for something that they can't fully see or can't directly access because it'll fall out pretty easily. So if you have this laying on a flat surface and you get your bird to knock it around and throw it off the shelf, the treat will basically fall right out and it's a really easy success for them to begin to understand the concepts of foraging. As they get better at it, you can make this more complicated. You can stuff that crinkle paper in here to conceal it again. You could even stuff the crinkle paper in between each of the springs so that way it's sticking out and looking a little bit crazy and they can have a lot more fun ripping and pulling at this toy part than if it was just plain on the table. It'll make it look a lot different and get them accustomed to the idea of foraging for things in toy parts that look different than things that they're used to already without it having to be an entirely new part. These can also be used easily to conceal each other. So there are two easy cone shapes. You could make it quite complicated by putting the treat inside the cone and sticking one cone inside the other. So now your bird has to remove one cone in order to get the other one or you could stick a string through them and have them facing both wide ends together so that way the bird can open them like a bit of a clamshell and be able to get the seeds out from inside. One final way you can utilize these that can be pretty difficult for a lot of birds is to actually thread the two springs together so that way they are intertwined and locked into one solid piece. You can pull it apart and tuck some of your treats inside and then leave it fully concealed. Now this is a pretty hard material. So if you have a smaller bird like a parrotlet that doesn't really like to chew hard wood, this would not be something that they would enjoy. But for those birds who do love ripping through hard wood, this would be a nice way to help encourage them to chew through once they've already associated that treats are inside this toy. And this is something you could easily do gradually so that way they could begin to learn how to separate the pieces or how to break through the pieces in order to access those treats. Since you are threading the two individual pieces together, you could easily thread them slightly less when you're introducing them to the concept and then make it more and more concealed and more and more unified to make it more complicated. Making bird toys can be difficult sometimes. It can be very easy to fall into a rhythm of just kind of making the same looking thing over and over and over again. So I hope that this gave you a couple different ideas of how to utilize your toy parts a little bit differently so you can change things up and have a bit more fun. But that will do it for me today. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.